I'm Jacob. I'm Yuri, and we're going for a drive. Twenty twenty one Ram fifteen hundred TRX with launch control. <laughs> horsepower and torque 702 horsepower 650 pound-feet of torque from a 6.2 liter supercharged V8 so this is the Raptor competitor and it's a Hellcat truck from Ram Hellcat truck so Ram did exactly what everyone expected them to do is shove the Hellcat engine into a truck which is what everyone always wanted them to do. And it's not a street truck, it's an off-road Baja truck. Yeah, so this competes directly with the Raptor, obviously. However, the horsepower and the torques and the drivetrain does not really compete with it. It just destroys the Raptor. Because the Raptor has a twin-turbo six-cylinder. Yeah. Which is the same six-cylinder from the Ford GT. But this is like way more fun. And the supercharger hit me with it. That's good. Okay, and then you just upshifted twice because you floored it in automatic, and when you wanted to upshift, you clicked and it put you into paddle mode but didn't upshift. Right, because I was in drive, I wasn't in paddle mode. And I feel like every other car will upshift you if you're in automatic and you click the up paddle, and you disagree with that, so unless I'm yeah. crazy, could someone let us know? All right, we are in drive right now in the Mercedes Slay MG, and if I click the upshift paddle, right up to the next gear. And this is the Slay MG. It's a GLE 53 that I designed a wrap for. For the holidays, Mercedes gave us some money to spread joy around the community. So we donated that all to the Daily Bread Food Bank. 25 for Christmas. Slay MG, pretty clever. S claws like a race car. And I put a knit flame pattern that they made really, really nice. And of course we have straight pipes at the front. And the matching ugly sweater. So for some reason, since we're on the road, let's just send it to a cliche corner. I'm gonna not try and understeer because that's all this thing wants to do is just understeer. But man, okay, <laughs> just tons of understeer, like tons. However, the roads are a little bit wet. So yeah, all understeer. <laughs> you can get a little bit of oversteer. I'm not gonna try and do it right now just because it's so difficult to get it out of this. In the dry, you can do that. How about on gravel? I don't know, Yuri. Neither do I. We weren't at the launch event, so we didn't have a chance to jump it. And because of some stuff, we weren't able to do an off-road review like we planned to for this. Yeah, we're, we're gonna do a full off-road review just like we did with the original Raptor review, but hopefully we'll do that another time when we get a chance to. And since we weren't able to off-road at this time, definitely subscribe and hit the bell because we will do that in the future. And part of the reason why we can't do drifts and oversteers and whatever, like just on command, is because this is full-time four-wheel drive. You cannot do 100% rear wheel drive. And this does have an eight speed ZF auto as well. So it does shift really quick because we have some crazy looking paddles that are so bad. Yeah, they're they're probably the worst paddles I've seen ever. They, I would have been happier if they just left the top the way it is on every other Hellcat automatic. Exactly, because they disconnect around the radio control buttons. And I love radio control buttons, but not this much. Exactly. But like Solantis has no <laughs> other way to put, it is called Solantis. Stellantis, Yuri. They have no other way to put their buttons for radio controls on the steering wheel because everything has it on the back. So like they have no workaround. Yeah, so as much as I do like paddles on every car that has them, these ones are just kind of weird. So, I mean, I kind of end up just leaving this in automatic. And then how about our drive modes? So there's a bunch of them and we press this mode button below our TRX button, which is a cool button to have. However, they are all laggy to get into. So we do have tow, snow, auto, custom, mud and sand, rock, and back to boss and sport yeah it's like <laughs> it's not easy to get from mode to mode and it's not like they put like the easy modes together it's not like normal sport comfort it's like they like throw snow in the middle so like everything's changing half the time you change the modes anyways exactly so what i end up actually doing is just pressing the trx button and then changing the modes through the infotainment yeah because it shows up all the drive mode screen and everything it's like way easier to use that and you can see exactly what everything is doing 
just like you can in all the Hellcat models. Yes, but I'd like to say that Baja mode is my favorite mode in this truck, so I'm going to leave it in Baja mode. I'm not gonna put it in sport mode because I find that it firms up the suspension just enough, not to the point that it's uncomfortable, but I want this to be stupidly floaty. I hit some speed bumps really slow in Baja mode and it was a little too bouncy, so sport was fine for me. I kept it in auto and I had no issues with it because if you put it in sport, like it keeps the RPM so high and this thing just guzzles gas. Yeah, so this thing does have Bilstein shocks, which are special for this truck. They are on the front and the back. And we also have coil suspension in the back, which is different than the Raptor's leaf springs. So overall, the suspension is quite comfortable. That's why I prefer Baja so much more because it's the most comfortable version of the suspension. And one day we'll be able to test it out on actual off-road stuff, maybe someday. I mean, we did plan for it, but anyway. Well, like we don't have, we didn't have a jump built. Well, we're just gonna <laughs> jump on that sketchy thing between trees and hope we didn't wreck. Yeah, we 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 jumped the ZR2 there. So. I know, but it's sketch. And if we were able to jump it, this does have jump detection, so this will actually change the transmission, the engine, and everything, so that you don't burn out the engine basically upon landing and stuff like that. And then it'll also stiffen up the shocks, so when you do land everything's good to go. So like I said, we don't have any two highs. So basically you just drive this thing in four auto all the time. And then you do have four wheel drive high and four wheel drive low. And then I end up just launch controlling all the time in this thing, just literally all the time. Thanks to that Christmas tree button right there. You launched it for me. And I actually heard an echo in like an open environment. I've never heard a car make an echo from a launch control. That's how loud this thing was. It's ridiculously loud. Like it's it's really good. And the exhaust sounds pretty good. Should we take a listen to the outside? To the outside. And there's also the supercharger sounds in here, so it's a pretty damn good sound. Going through a tunnel. I've never heard anything so loud. It actually sounded like the roar of a Tyrannosaurus Rex from the movies. Oh, is that what TRX is? Maybe. Oh. So let's get into the TRX-ness of it or the tyrannosaurus nexus of it. Okay, so Ford has the Raptor, T-Rex is bigger than a Raptor, so that they made one that's like, oh, we're gonna kill the Raptor, it's bigger. And it's not actually called T-Rex, it's T-R-X, but they want you to call it the T-Rex, but they've got little T-Rex Easter eggs on it, so they have a T-Rex eating a Raptor under the hood. Then they also have a size chart with a T-Rex compared to an actual Velociraptor, because actual ones are smaller than the ones from Jurassic Park the movie, in this armrest right here. Solid joke, guys, good job. It was good, that's like killer marketing. Yeah, yeah. Like 100%. It is. But subjectively, where they do fail with the T-Rexness of it is the actual looks from the outside. Okay, the front end, you'd expect it to have something crazy at the front, like how Ford has Ford. Like maybe you want this to say Ram or T-Rex, and it kind of does say Ram, but it looks like a Rebel, where every Ford is trying to look like a Raptor. Yeah, so that's the thing that Ram did, is they came out with the Rebel first and screwed this one up because of that. So if they didn't come out with the Rebel first, if we never saw that Ram front end, and this was the first one this with it... This would look so sick. Exactly. So they ruined ruined it themselves by making the Rebel look so cool originally. And I think even the pre-production like mock-ups of this thing yes. looked cooler than this for some reason. Yeah, the concept looked awesome. Okay, but to copy more Ford stuff, since this is wider, they needed to put three lights at the front and they put these three in the hood scoop. Yeah, so Ford pioneered making the clearance lights a feature rather than just putting them on the roof because that's what you have to do for commercial vehicles because they're so wide. Ram also did the feature thing by putting them in the hood scoop rather than the grill. So now our regular Rebel is going to try to put three lights in the hood scoop? Yeah, dude. Like, like 100% they will. <laughs> as soon as you see that, because everybody knows everyone puts fake Raptor grills on every Ford, they're 100% going to start putting that on Rebels. I think someone's going to come up with a T-Rex grill to make it stand out from Rebels. Oh yeah, that'd be cool. And to jump to another T-Rex slash Raptor thing, the Raptor has the Raptor Splash. This has T-Rex on the back. I think the Raptor Splash is a little cooler, but this T-Rex thing is the only way you can differentiate this from like other Rebels from a distance. Well, the new gen, the second gen Raptor doesn't have a splash. It only says no, Raptor. No, it says Raptor, yeah. Yeah. I guess so it's like still Raptor wins. And you do have to pay extra for that graphic, just like you have to do it on the Raptor. We also have T-Rex on the hood, which is an extra option as well, just like it is on the Raptor. And it is obviously wide body because yes, it is a Baja truck and that's the reason why it needs the clearance lights, but it just doesn't look so wide body. It's just every Everything's too rounded off. But I mean, it, it does look pretty wide. Yeah, it's just difficult to see how wide it is because the headlights are kind of elongated and then they chose black plastic for the wide body vent part of the headlight rather than making it body color so it doesn't look as wide. Okay, headlights. You can't have them in just DRL mode where it's the cool outline. There's always 
headlights on in the middle. Yeah, so the overall front end just doesn't look as cool as it could. Yeah, because you can get Raptor retrofit lights for Ford Raptors, and then you got a cool orange outline, which you can get an orange outline in this if you have your turn signal or your hazards on. So here's Photoshopping of what this truck would look like if it didn't have headlights on and just the amber outlines, which yep. looks way sicker. That does look cool. So moving around to the side, you'll notice that this is a full-size cab. You can't get it in any shorter bodies like you could on the previous two generations of Raptor. Yeah, I don't mind the full-size though. Yeah, I mean, it's nice, but it's just, it looks so much cooler on a shorter truck. And the wheels look really cool. We do have 18s on this. Yeah, they, they totally killed it. So now to the back end, do we have a gimmicky tailgate or anything? No, we don't. Just a regular old tailgate. But we got that sidestep thing that pops out. Yeah, which is pretty nice. And it's actually legitimately convenient to get into the bed with that. And we have cool exhaust. Yeah, straight through, right out the back, nothing out the side here. And then we have the optional tire in the truck bed, but you also have a spare tire underneath. So this has six wheels. <laughs> yes, it does. And you do have to pay about a thousand dollars extra to bed mount it. I mean, if you just want to advertise to everyone you're the Baja master of the world, yeah, I guess you gotta have to spend the thousand dollars, but I feel like you should just not spend the thousand dollars and then just use your bed because you don't want to have to like unbolt that every time you need to use it. Yeah, Baja stuff. Baja. I mean, if I lived in Texas, I'd definitely get that. Baja. Yo, drive on this dirt right here real quick. Baja, oh, man. Baja. That was so <laughs> sick. Sick, we're so Baja. Yeah, yeah, watch this. Baja. Baja. <laughs> Baja has a new parkour. And since we're talking about bumpers and looks and all that, we should probably talk about approach, departure, and breakover angles. They're basically all identical to the Raptor, give or take like an inch or half an inch or even 0.1 of an inch, depending on what you're talking about. Basically almost all the same, even the ground clearance and the water fording depth. So it's basically 100% as capable as a Raptor. It's just the powertrain that's way better. And the sound. Yes, which is part of the powertrain. <laughs> One last launch control and then you drive. Better traction this time. <sighs> so good. That's sound. Dude, zero to 100 in around four seconds, like four and a half, that's pretty wild. For a big truck. Yeah. America. <laughs> Is this better than the Trackhawk, do you think? I don't know. It's just, it's funnier because of what we're in. Yeah, I think the Trackhawk was definitely way more aggressive and like way more, oh my God. Yeah, like way more. It's definitely faster than this. Like this is a big ass truck. It would be fun to do this launch control on dirt and stuff like that. Yeah, it really would be. So now moving on to this interior, it is pretty much the exact same Ram Rebel interior, except for one major difference. We now have an actual shifter instead of a dial because I guess since you're gonna be like ripping it and stuff, you wanna be able to actually shift your gears. Yeah, and then you also wanna have that launch button. I think that's the only reason they gave it to you. And now if we look at all the little things, this is all carbon fiber, some cool brush steel pattern, some Alcantara and red stitching. Yeah, the materials are all top notch in here, which is what you'd expect with the price so high. And I think everything looks good. It's a good combo. You were saying that it's kind of stupid to have Alcantara for like a muddy jump truck, but like realistically, how many people are actually gonna like take advantage of this truck in like the dirt? So that's the thing. I like that there is Alcantara, but having Alcantara in a truck that you're gonna be off-roading is kind of ridiculous, especially because it's on the steering wheel. It is optional, you don't have to get it there, but the amount of people that will be actually Bajaing this is going to be very minimal considering the price of this, I think. So realistically, having all these options and all this really nice Alcantara in here for driving this on the road is awesome. And then on the armrest, we got this cool T-Rex plaque. Yes, which tells us our displacement and our superchargers and our horsepowers and our PSIs. And we also have T-Rex on the glove box and on the seats. TRX, not T-Rex. Thank you, Yuri. My bad, my they bad. Did, they didn't, there's no E there. I know. Marketing be marketing, got me. <laughs> so then we also have T-Rex in the middle of our gauge cluster when the gauge cluster starts up, man, is it laggy. Like, I think they went to three frames a second on that. And this also has a bunch of lag in that gauge cluster and in this infotainment because when you go to your performance pages, if it's the first time you press that button after you started the car, it takes forever for that to load. But that's like every FCA product. Yeah, but it's just, it's so bad in this. Unlike every other Stellantis product, this doesn't show every single digit in the gauge cluster when you're ripping. It actually skips number. Like even Maserati's 
will show every digit. That's yeah. so weird. It was the first thing that I actually noticed because we like it in every other Hellcat because they can actually show you exactly every digit. And then both dials in here, they're pretty much exactly like the Longhorn we drove, except instead of cowboyed out, they're just like carbon fibered out. And we have shift lights that shine really bright, and you can also set where those shift in the infotainment. So I'm gonna switch it to auto. Before we keep going with the infotainment, I wanna try something. Okay. Get it nice high gear and just gonna stomp on it. That shifts so quick. I think every other company that sucks at making cars shift out of automatic in like the comfort mode should take advice from this. Yeah, this is a Hellcat. This is the ZF 8-speed, so yes, this. But like, it was like, bah! It was. <laughs> we do have Android Auto and Apple CarPlay, which is great. Yeah, but what sucks is that you can't have your Apple CarPlay up at the top with your Sirius XM at the bottom. The only thing you can have at the bottom is your climate control and stuff like that. Yeah, and for the record, I am assuming we have Android Auto because I have an iPhone. And then after living with this a bit longer, I think I do prefer the non-tall, long-screen Chrysler infotainments. Yeah, so I think I like the F-150 new infotainment better than this one now. Okay, but this compared to one with like hard buttons for climate. Like how many times have you been confused by this? Yeah, I know. And it's all gloss black all around it as well. And you can set your favorites up to the very bottom here, like set whatever you want. Like you've got your 360 camera, which is unreal in this. Like I can park this anywhere, no question. It is really good. And then you can put your front camera, which you can't use while driving, which kind of sucks. But like looking down at this stuff, it's got such a low angle like that Prius that we drove. You can actually use that camera if you're rock crawling. But then another huge missed opportunity. We have a blank button up here. Why can't that be the front camera like it is in the Fords. Like, it's so nice having a front camera button there, especially with a big truck, in case something like runs in front to see it. Bro, that should be traction control right there. Turn that shit off right away. <laughs> and we do have four auxiliary buttons, just like you do on a Raptor, except these are so kind of dainty. Like those switches, those toggles yeah. on the Raptor are just so much They're cooler. badass, <laughs> click, click. And then we have cool cell phone holders at the bottom, just like all the other Rams had, which is like the coolest thing ever. Nice and soft, doesn't think it's gonna scratch your phone or anything. And wireless charging on the left. And what about our cup holders? Do they fit a cup? Yes. Just yes, fine. They do. And what about the visors? I think this will pass. Yeah. Three, two, one. Yes, good job. And surprisingly enough, this does have radar cruise. It doesn't have lane keep, but it has lane departure. That'll actually pull you out and it's controlled by this hard button right up here up front. Yeah, but it doesn't lane center you at all. No, no, but like for this, like just being able to pull me out, I think is good enough because I get like so distracted. Like you look somewhere and all of a sudden you're drifting away because it's so huge. It's like staying in a lane is difficult here. Yeah, I don't find that at all. I'm just, I'm used to driving a really wide truck for some reason. And back to our Sirius XM radio, you can rewind right from the main screen. You don't have to click a replay button or anything, which is awesome. That is awesome. Okay. A little cliche corner. Okay. That is just understeer if it's wet. <laughs> yeah, you can't be too stabby with this thing in the wet. Yeah, I mean, it's, there's, I'm not, I, there's nothing to talk about. No, right no, now. it's I'm, not a track hog. <laughs> I just gotta save this for when we go off roading. Yes. One thing that I noticed on the interior that I actually don't like that feels like it's an added touch but is unnecessary are these like leather covers on the holy S handles because they just look so cheap. Like, just, just don't. The stitching is very hard. Yeah, and it's just the look of it. Just, eh, anyways. And how about back seat room? I mean, it's obviously fantastic. And we can fold the seats up, put a lot of stuff there, nice and flat. And then how about the seats up front? They are very comfortable. They are slightly more bolstered than regular Rams. Not like something you could sink into. I think a Raptor would probably be cushier. Yeah, because I think the newest Raptor that we haven't driven has Recaro's now. Oh, yeah. Yeah, because yeah, we haven't driven a Raptor in four years, Ford, eh? Ford just stopped giving Raptors after like 2017. Yeah, because like they started getting like live valve shocks, which we haven't even tried. So we're comparing this to a four-year-old Raptor, like the first <laughs> version of it, because we haven't driven the newest one. So honestly, I'm sorry that we haven't, because I would have loved to. And road noise in here, it's surprisingly quiet, comfortable. The amount of exhaust and supercharger you hear from it is like, Perfect. It is a very good balance for daily driving. It's mostly supercharger unless you open that rear window. Here, let's give them a little bit of open rear window and supercharger. Good balance. Just right. So I think that's pretty much it with the new Ram TRX that we can do on the streets. Yes, it is. Let's get to the price. There's actually one more thing, Yuri. Towing. This can tow 8,100 pounds, which is exactly 100 pounds more than the Raptor. Let's get to the price. It starts at $93,995. Canadian. And this one's optioned out to $118,535. That's a lot of money, but I feel like trucks like this are just for rich people like fun things and marketing. Yeah, but that's the thing. The Raptor starts at about $15,000 less. Yes, I will admit this is a better truck than the Raptor because it should be because it's so much more expensive, but 15 grand, that's quite a bit. And this one, as it's optioned out, is about 20 grand more than you can spec out a Raptor. And we are talking about the previous gen Raptor because there is no Raptor of the newest F-150 generation yet. 
So if you value the actual powertrain, because yes, this is so much better, then get this. But if you're okay with that twin turbo V6, I think the looks of the Raptor are better. And if you want to save yourself some money because it's just as capable, just get a Raptor. So let us know if you're team T-Rex or team Raptor, or are you just going to get an old Raptor? Yeah, just like my Raptor.